LG has never been afraid of doing something different, and I appreciate them for it. I was one of the few clever people who had purchased the LG G5, thinking that modular phones were the future, uh, only to obviously be proven wrong. This year, LG started out with the LG V60, and while it wasn't particularly new for LG, the dual screen functionality is still certainly very unique on the market. And I thought they were done for the year. And then they released the LG Wing, which was very different from the LG V60 and it's certainly different from any other phone on the market. So say you're an LG fan, or maybe you just want to try something completely new. Should you choose the LG V60 or should you choose the LG Wing? Well, let's talk about it. This is NOISO and this is the LG V60 versus the LG Wing. The biggest difference between these two phones is going to be the design, which is going to define the way that you can use it in most situations. Now, if you look at these two side by side, it's not completely obvious that they are even related. While they're both made by LG and both kind of weird looking phones, they're not real, they don't follow a lot of the same design elements or design language. The LG V60 is more squared off with, with more uh, slab kind of feel. And it's, it's relatively thick for a phone, but, but on its own, it, it still has some sleekness to it. Whereas the LG Wing, since it has the added screen baked in, is quite a bit thicker. And it has more of a curved feel on the back, which your hand kind of fits a little bit more easily onto, rather than the thickness that you have to grip onto with the LG V60. The camera layout on the LG V60 is horizontal, where the LG Wing has a more vertical layout similar to the Note 20. If I had to pick a favorite in terms of design, I do prefer the navy blue and bronze color palette of my model of the LG V60, whereas the, the muted gray color palette of the LG Wing is a little bit more boring. But from an ergonomic standpoint, I think the LG Wing fits a lot more comfortably in my hand, even when you don't have the LG V60 in its, in its optional case. Now, when I was using the LG V60 in its dual screen case, I found that I didn't often have a lot of usability for the side-by-side -side displays. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, I don't think unless you specifically have a reason to have apps side by side that you will notice a significant difference in usability. There are a lot of people who might get to get a benefit from this, but for me, I often kept a video on one side and then just browse the other side, which is nice to have that extra screen real estate. But the biggest issue that I had with it is the fact that the aspect ratio doesn't really lend itself to that second video fitting well in that second display and it ends up very small. For that very reason, I actually really enjoyed using the LG Wing because I could put a video up on the top of the display and then browse the bottom of the display. And while the bottom display is significantly smaller than the secondary display on the LG V60, it still is usable in a lot of social media apps or texting, which was good enough for me. Now, while both of these devices are pretty heavy, I still prefer the LG Wings feel in its hand, even when I don't have the LG V60 in its dual screen case, because it's actually not as wide. And so it fits more comfortably in my hand. Now, both of the displays are obviously excellent. I think both of them have great colors and great brightness, since they're both nice AMOLED displays. But if you're particularly sensitive to high refresh rate displays, neither of these will probably be your best solution since they don't have them. I personally prefer the primary display of the LG Wing because despite the fact that it does have curved edges, it doesn't have an, a notch or a cutout in the screen, whereas the LG V60 does have this teardrop notch. And so if I had to choose between the two for watching content, I would choose the LG Wing. Both the LG V60 and the Wing have high-end specs, which means that they should perform very well. And in practice, I think the LG V60 actually performs very well. The LG Wing, unfortunately, I had strange performance issues with it, where while it seems to be pretty fast in most day-to-day -day use, I've noticed that the scrolling performance is actually not great. So when I find myself swiping through Twitter, it actually seems that like there's a lag or there, there's not very much consistency in the acceleration of, of the swipe. And so for that reason, I'd actually prefer the LG V60 for normal social media browsing or anything like that. It's an odd bug that I've had where it's kind of like wearing socks on a waxy floor. That's the experience of trying to swipe on the LG Wing screen. The cameras are also very different. 
Now, in most pictures, I found that both of these phones have kind of the, the LG color palette when taking pictures. And I've always found that to be a little bit flatter than a lot of other big competitors. Now, personally, that's not the right choice for me. But the benefit with, the, with choosing any LG device is you might have a lot more versatility in the camera with manual settings. Both of these devices have the standard primary, wide angle, and telephoto lenses. But then the additional benefit of going with the LG Wing is one of its sensors is sitting on a gimbal-like device so that there's a lot more smoothness in video. Now, in practice, practice, I'll go into detail of what my experience was like in my full review, but I wasn't really as impressed as I expected to be. While it is really cool, the fact that you can kind of frame your shot and, and really softly and smoothly glide from, from subject to subject or to follow a subject, I was hoping that this would be good enough to replace my, my B-roll camera, which is a Sony Handycam, but unfortunately this is very, very far from doing so. But I'll go into full detail in my full review of the LG Wing. In practice, I didn't find that the camera layout or the camera setup, setup on either of these devices really stood out to me. So finally, let's talk about the experience of using either of these devices. Now, obviously, the LG Wing is going to feel more cohesive of an experience since it is all built into one device, whereas the LG V60 does have the required additional case to get the dual screen. I think the LG Wing feels more like a complete thought, whereas the LG V60 feels a little bit more like an afterthought. Now, I will say that the LG V60, on the other hand, does feel like you're closer towards uh, an increasing productivity since having an app in either screen could allow you to do things that the LG Wing might not. A lot of the productivity use cases that I talked about in my Surface Duo review would apply to the LG V60 more so than the LG Wing. And I've found that the only real reason that I would use the LG Wing is specifically to have a video up on the top screen while browsing the second screen. Now, there are option, other options that I'll talk through in my review that this enables, like the camera app, but I don't think that really adds that much of an experience. But since I found the biggest use case for having two screens on the LG V60 was to have a video on the other screen, I think the experience of watching video on this is a lot better because it fits a lot more naturally into the horizontal aspect ratio than the vertical aspect ratio of the LG V60. And so for that reason, I think I would prefer the LG Wing in practice because I'm not gonna be doing, I'm not gonna be getting enough work done on my LG V60. Now finally, let's talk about the price. I think the LG Wing at $1,000 is a pretty reasonable price point considering how most unique form factors have had a lot higher prices. But on the other hand, the LG V60, since it came out a few months ago, has already seen quite a bit of depreciation. And you can find this for maybe $600, $700 used or refurbished, which is pretty solid considering you're getting such a unique experience. But that leaves a pretty significant gap. All else equal, I would pick the LG Wing just because it's such a unique experience compared to anything else on the market. And I value that unique experience. But if I did want just a great phone, then I'd say the LG V60 is the better option because not only is it at a lower price point, but it feels more cohesive from a single screen experience. Whereas the LG Wing, as I've mentioned, has some bugs that keep it from being a good single screen experience. But let me know what you think down in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.